Today, my complex Phalaenopsis hybrids are getting 500 parts per million of fertilizer for the first time ever. And I'm doing it as a blitz soak at a pH of 6.5. On top of that, another thing that I promised in a video a while ago when I was showing roots versus spikes, how happy I was about how many spikes I was getting, I said that once the orchids would bloom, I would decide who gets to stay blooming and which spikes are coming off. And that is what we're going to address today. Besides that, we're gonna look at some beautiful complex hybrid Phalaenopsis blooms. Now you may quite rightly say that is a pathetic little show of spikes and blooms and you are absolutely right. I fully agree all these orchids have so much more potential, so much more production on the bloom front if they had enough light. Mine don't get that much light. So the little blooms that I do get, even if it's just two or three, I am gonna take them, I'm going to embrace them. And even some Phalaenopsis got two spikes this year for the first time and the buds blasted. That is all name of the game in my grow space during the winter months. It is dark and I have to open the doors to allow for some fresh air to come in, which sometimes creates a draft. And with that, we get bud blast. All my Phalaenopsis are on the table here on the East Patio today. So welcome to the East Patio. Welcome to this video. It's good to have you. Please like the video. I would so appreciate it. And please subscribe. My analytics are telling me I've got so many people watching my videos, but they are on the percentage side that have not subscribed. So let me know in the comments what is stopping you from subscribing or please just subscribe. I would love to get that percentage a little bit higher. When I say all, there is one that is missing and that is my Ninja Yellow. She is staying inside because even though it is somewhat an overcast day, I can do what I want to do with these orchids today and film it without them getting scorched. I would love to have my Ninja Yellow bloom, but she's already showing one bud blasting. And if I bring her out now, she's a little bit of a diva. She misses her original mom, the orchid room. She misses her very much. I would just love to see Ninja Yellow bloom again. So hopefully the remaining buds on her won't blast. She is soaking indoors with 500 parts per million of fertilized water as well. So before we get into cutting spikes and looking at some blooms, let me just address one thing. When I talk about 500 parts per million and we are so early in the year the growing season for phalaenopsis complex hybrid orchids has not yet started in my climate why am i going in this early my strategy is to get ahead of the game and work with the hormones of the orchids because some of the spikes are going to cut off which means that is their reset phase then it'll take another six to eight weeks, maybe even more, to start growing vegetative growth, hopefully new roots as well. And by that time, they will have already gotten their fertilizer boost because I'm not gonna be doing this at every watering moving forward until I actually see signs of new growth coming. This is me preempting what's gonna happen and once the hormones kick in, they will have sufficient nutrients already in their system, so. As we move forward, I am gonna continue with 500 parts per million, but that is once they start growing. This is the first time they're gonna get a hit. And then hopefully when our decision-making process of whose spikes to cut, we will see the results probably August or September and see if it worked out. It worked last year. Now let's hope it works for other candidates as well. Enough of the jibber jabber. Let me get you in a little bit closer and let's talk about each and every orchid and look at some of the beautiful blooms that they did bloom out for us. This is my beautiful Maximilian. We saw Maximilian recently when we introduced his keiki. Well, in that video, I said the blooms weren't opening up properly. They were still a little bit cup shaped. And you can see that there are some issues going on here. This one is looking beautiful. Still got a bud left. This is the first blooming that I've had from Maximilian. Skipped a season in 21 and 22. Lovely to see that this orchid is back in bloom. You can see the back spike never absorbed itself fully. I use it as a stake and it branched and there's a bud going on here as well. Although I love the blooms, I will be cutting Maximilian spikes because I would like to make sure that this orchid 
can get even stronger. And you can see that I would love these roots to extend sooner rather than later. And with that, give Maximilian the opportunity to then be strong enough to open blooms properly in the next blooming cycle. So those are my reasonings, what I'm looking for with every orchid today, especially when it comes to strength on the root front and foliage. So let's deal with this. Now, normally I would prefer my orchids to absorb their spikes, additional strength, etc. but that's gonna be counterproductive. I don't want any of these spikes to get any ideas about <laughs> branching out at the nodes. This is about energy conservation. It's about getting the orchid back to strength. So off they come. An absolutely stunner of an orchid. And I have to say, I am so happy to see her back with two spikes because that's how I got her from my daughter many, many years ago. Two beautiful spikes with triple the amount of blooms on each spike. This is the maximum that I can achieve in my conditions. Just so happy that this orchid is doing so well. Look at her leaf canopy. <laughs> That's what we can call it at this point in time. I don't know if I mentioned lemon meringue, but she is a gorgeous chartreuse green yellow. I love these kinds of blooms. Love me the color of them. I'm going to allow her to keep both her spikes because, I mean, hello. In comparison to Maximilian that we saw first, look at how many leaves she's got. They're all doing well. I'm having a little bit of a concern with one in the back here. This is cold damage. It curled. That's fine. It's the oldest leaf. As long as this doesn't perpetuate itself and move through the entire orchid, we're going to leave her. She came through the staking process like a champ doing well, plenty of roots in the pot. We're going to enjoy these blooms for so much longer. Now, another thing you may be seeing is very, very dusty leaves. And I'm a little bit loath actually to touch them at this point in time. I was hoping I could dust them off, but it's not exactly the right temperature outdoors today. It's only 16 degrees here on the patio. That is already a little bit too low for them, but seeing as my Phalaenopsis are acclimated, they'll be okay, it'll be okay. But if I were now to wash the leaves down, I think we would find that we're gonna have a lot more trouble with spotting and other issues when it comes to damp leaves and a cool breeze. I don't want that problem to start. So the leaves stay dusty today. I will clean them on another day. Harlequin, looking gorgeous, looking amazing. Last year I didn't have this many blooms. So for me, this is great progress. I'm loving it. Harlequin always opens the blooms. They're flat to begin with. And then there's a little bit of a reflex on the top sepal. But big blooms, enjoying it very much. Harlequin has always been a beast. I can normally should be able to get huge leaves of this size, which is great if I had the space. So the fact that I am not growing the same original size leaf that this orchid is capable of, you see my leaves, they're half the size. I'm actually okay with that because <laughs> like I said, space is an issue. And if she were to develop those kinds of leaves in my collection, I would be in big, big trouble. You see, the size of her also means a huge long spike. Now, this is not because of the low light levels and the spike grows towards the light until, you know, it's got enough light to bloom. This is a characteristic of this orchid. When she came into my collection, she couldn't sit on my lap when we put her into the car. I had to put her on the floor because her spikes were staked. It was insane. It was absolutely fantastic. My daughter thought she was absolutely beautiful. Not one I would have picked myself, but I'm glad that we made the decision to get her because I have grown to absolutely adore the spotting. And then, well, ha, huh, just love that lip. The contrast is amazing and every bloom is unique. I have two more buds to go if they blast on me because what we're doing here today is a little bit dangerous for buds then so be it i will then also be encouraged to cut the spike off which i have no intentions of doing for this orchid because she also went through the staking process like a champ last year so many roots in the pot there is no sign of decline but if i were to see bud blast 
then I might as well cut the whole spike off. We're going to leave Harlequin as she is and just put her back into position <laughs> and have another quick look-see at the blooms. Fantastic. This is the beautiful Alexandra named after my daughter. Also did not bloom during the season of 21-2022. She was in lava rock and she was doing so well in that. But when I wanted everything uniform, I put her into Lekka and self-watering and she has hated me for it ever since. She has not recovered very, very well from that transition, which kind of surprises me. But anyway, we have a teeny tiny little blooming here. Her potential is exponential. When I bloomed her in 2018 and 2019, she had a spike that branched and I had about 25 to 30 blooms on that single spike. So you can see she's not happy with what I'm doing to her in Lekka and self-watering. We have one original spike. Uh, she branched on another spike, an older spike in the back here. What I'm going to do with Alexandra is I'm going to cut both her blooms off because this orchid this season is going to get staked. She's going to hate me even more. You can also see that I need more leaves on this orchid. So she is going to be undergoing quite a stressful season. I would like her just to focus on gaining strength, not worrying about holding on to blooms. And also another little added detail, her blooms are a lot more saturated when she has the right light levels. So there's all these different components going on here. We're going to give her a rest and just, you know what, thank you so much for blooming at least this time around. Now I'm not cutting my spike here all the way down. This is what I use as a staking device for when I stake my orchids. I take the oldest spike and well, stake that using a wire when I correct the positioning of the orchid. So we just cut off the branching. Here we've got Bubba. <laughs> I have called my daughter Bubba ever since she was little. And back in the day, this orchid caught her eye in our garden center. And we've been through some trials and tribulations with this Champions Lightning. What is her trade name? This is actually the third one because the first two were on a sales table and they looked a little bit patetico. Having then bought one that was not on the sales table, this orchid has certainly given me some insight as to how Phalaenopsis orchids, even if they all are complex hybrids, they are all different and this one hates growing roots, period. The fact that she's okay, the fact that she got through the staking process of 2022, I'm so happy about it. You can see she even hated that part. You've got the stress here on the leaves from when I staked her. This orchid is a bit of a diva, but we have a second leaf that is probably not going to progress any further, which is fine for what else she has going on because she also grew a second spike. And this is where I showed you talked about the bud blast right here. So Baba needs everything to gain her strength back. And because of all these reasons, having mentioned the stress of last year's staking, the fact she isn't a very generous root grower, the fact that she <laughs> clearly needs energy focusing on other things, the spikes are coming off. And because I already have her staked in such a way, these spikes aren't that strong. I'm cutting them down all the way to the end. Again, I do not want to encourage this orchid to think for one moment that she can branch. This is sweetheart. Can you see a pattern here? Every time an orchid catches my daughter's eye back in the day, yes, she was given a name that sort of resembled and reflected whose eye the orchid actually caught. Anyway, sweetheart, has so much more potential than what she's doing here and now, but she didn't bloom in 21 or 22 either. And you can see that she's not very vigorous in doing anything else either. She was also staked last year, season 2022. You can see the stress signs in the leaves as well. She started a new leaf and then true to form, she can't multitask. When she started the spike, everything stopped, including the roots in the pot. So because Sweetheart is slow to come out of the gates, this spike is coming off. And because it's useless, you see, it's way down there. 
The stake is doing its job. The orchid is not leaning forward just yet. When I do want to then support her a little bit more, I'll be using the wire around the stem. This spike will not serve me any purpose to hold up such an orchid with what could be very big leaves. It was wonderful to have these blooms, seeing that she's recovered at least to that point. I appreciate that a lot. Now you may be wondering, my goodness, that is difficult to do. I wouldn't be able to cut off the spikes of my phalaenopsis. Well, let me tell you something while I get the next orchid. Back when I was struggling, in general, to grow my complex phalaenopsis hybrids in Lekka and self-watering, there was one season where I cut off 13 spikes in total for the sake of the orchid. And that has made me pretty immune to feeling bad about cutting off spikes. That is why this is not difficult for me because I can see what it did in the past years, the results I got from that. And it's just an encouraging factor now that <laughs> I'm going to cut spikes because I know what I'm doing moving forward, what I'm intending for the orchid to respond to. If Walter has a mealy bug, we're going to make that mealy bug history. So let's have a look, see if there are more mealy bugs around. No, this is Walter. This was given to me by a house guest and for the first time ever, hence the name Walter, she's got two spikes. So let's bring the focus to the spikes, not the gorgeousness that is back there. Oh, distraction. Two spikes, first time. This is awesome. Walter in general is a super, super vigorous orchid. Now, you wouldn't think so because look at the nastiness. Sorry for the jiggle. Look at the nastiness of the roots in the pot right here but i'm telling you the pot is absolutely full this is not concerning me at all maybe we'll get some branching maybe we won't i'll tell you how this happened walter was also staked back in 2022 just to move him back into the pot because he was going to come falling over this orchid being so heavy and lots of foliage look at that it's awesome Anyway, one morning I would have walked into the growth space and everything would have been on the floor. So Walter needed staking. These roots were in the pot down. So now with the staking, yeah, they've become surface roots, which they don't like. So they look nasty, but we've got great roots in the pot. And well, <laughs> we are keeping Walter's blooms. We're keeping both the spikes and then... Hopefully when the house guest returns later for his summer stint, can show him that his orchid is blooming for the first time with two spikes. And then I'll show him the pictures of the cakey bloom <laughs> because they have been cut off already. So there we go, that's Walter. And Walter gets to bloom. This is the gorgeous Bubblicious. Yes, another orchid that caught my daughter's eye. Uh, no surprises there then because here's the thing. When I go to that specific garden center, I'm like a train. I put my blinkers on. I have to go through all the orchids on the table to get to where I want to go. But I make sure just to keep walking, keep walking. Well, in the background, I heard, oh, mom, look. And I thought, oh, no, my heart sank. And I thought, no, please. Anyway, I turned around. My daughter saw this and I went, oh, wow. You see, back in the day, it wasn't easy for us to find any kind of big lip phalaenopsis in our garden center. So this was pretty special. And you can see the bloom I'm kind of trying to feature here. She is huge. So Bubblicious, um, the orchid herself is way back there. She is like a harlequin candidate. Huge long spikes. Was also on the floor of the car <laughs> when we brought her home with double spikes. I can't replicate that, but what I'm impressed about is the fact that her leaves aren't exactly small like Harlequin. So you see, I have to be very careful because if Harlequin starts to grow to that potential and I've got Bubblicious right next to it, then pretty much these two orchids are going to be taking up the entire top shelf where they're living at. Same with this spike as well. It wasn't reaching for the light. It's just the size of the orchid. I have two more buds to go. I lost two blooms very quickly in succession, which had me a little bit concerned. 
but it would appear that was also because of me opening the terrace door that they just said, yeah, that one day, nah, not doing it, not having it. But the rest are holding on nicely. You see the bizarre thing is, we've got the first bloom that opened up here and then I have two, they just died. Those weren't buds, they had already bloomed out and then they didn't appreciate that door being open. Anyway, long story short, sorry I babble. I hardly get to geek out over my complex Phalaenopsis hybrids, but we are going to let Bubblicious bloom. She's got plenty of roots in her pot. The orchid is looking vigorous, and I think even 500 parts per million at this stage may be a little too little. <laughs> she could probably take 800, but we're, we're gonna start slowly. I don't want any salt buildup in the pots. A named Phalaenopsis, this is Phalaenopsis Hot Kiss. She is my first ever big lift Phalaenopsis and back in the day, as I mentioned, there's no such thing in our garden centers. Bubblicious wasn't even on the radar and I so desperately wanted a big lift fal. Enter Phalaenopsis Hot Kiss. She is so slow in opening her blooms. Everything is long and tedious, but thankfully this year we've got blooms because she also got a lot of bud blast in 21 and 22. All of them blasted, it was such a shame. However, you can see that the orchid herself, yeah, she's not staked either, and she's starting to lean out of the pot in my super dry climate. I want roots in the pot, and once I'm happy with the quantity of roots I have in the pot, I am happy to let the orchid bloom, blast her buds, whatever the circumstances may be. But you can see, yeah, in 2023, this season, we are going to be staking this orchid. And seeing as she is so slow with everything, including opening blooms. You can see we had one bud blast right there. We were going to be cutting this spike. Now, this spike has the potential of being a fabulous staking aid. The thing is, I don't want it to branch, so I'm in a bit of a conundrum here and now. Let me see if I can get you in a little bit closer. Excuse me, that sounded like my stomach was growling. It wasn't. That was me scooching the little pedestal. You see, this spike is pretty firm. So I'm kind of, uh, do I want to cut it here because I don't want her to send up? No, I am going to be using the stem to stake her. So just to make sure that I do not risk her thinking that she can branch out from down here, we are gonna be cutting this spike off all the way down. Now, I wouldn't suspect this orchid to be doing that anyway. She's not that vigorous of, you know, let's say a bloomer. My first blooming when I had all the lights and kitten caboodle going, etc. she also only produced nine blooms. So she's not one that comes in with a stonking high number of blooms. But <laughs> Murphy's Law, assuming is one thing, and then the reality is, oh, I wish I hadn't done that. We'll be using the stem to stake her, and then hopefully she can focus on what I want her to do, as in grow roots and become a little bit stronger than she really is. So while I appreciated the blooms, the decision has been made. We still have some blooms to enjoy. The ones that I cut off, I put into one of my <laughs> protein shake containers. So I'll have them on my desk to enjoy for as long as they're around. If they die very quickly, so be it. But I still have a few that I can enjoy. I was looking forward to this day. I was looking forward to this video. I hope that you understood my thought process as to who can bloom and who cannot, what I'm looking for, as well as where I cut the spike, why I cut the spike all the way down. Maybe in three or four years, you will see lots and lots of spikes that have not been absorbed because under normal circumstances, I would let my fowls just absorb their spikes or branch. So if you've made it all the way to the end, I appreciate that you did. Thank you so much for your time. Your support is appreciated. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I love hearing from you. Even if it's just to say hi, let me know you're here. Oh, and the last thing I'm going to be doing off camera is emptying all the pots out, flushing them through, and putting back 500 parts per million of fertilizer solution into the reservoir. Thank you so very much for watching. Have yourself a beautiful day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.